the doctor said with my complexion, I shouldn't be out in the sun really anyway. He said there's like an 80% chance by the time I'm 40, I'll have skin cancer, but it's 98% treatable, I guess. So it's not a monster deal right now. Very little sun protection. I think about things that run in your family, genetics, and it's not genetically, nobody has had any type of cancer. My name is Karen Hunky. I'm a family nurse practitioner with specialty training in dermatology. When you do tan, it releases endorphins. Um, endorphins are the body's natural chemical that makes you feel good, makes you feel happy. And so for many people, it's, it's like runners who get addicted to running because it releases endorphins. It's the same principle. I think it's the image that most Americans think is pretty nowadays. My skin, my back, it's, it's really done some damage, but uh, it's because I usually do that, that first real bad burn or two when you have control over it, like if you don't have to go to work. You get that going so you can actually last all day out in the sun. Uh, I guess more people notice when I'm darker than when I'm whiter. When your skin is a bronzy color and not pasty white, and I don't want to be gross when I'm older. Only benefit I can think of is more people notice you. Yes, if that's a benefit to you then. A sun tan is damaged to the skin just like a sunburn is damaged to the skin. You just don't have the burning and the stinging sensation. It's still damaged. You tan leather, you don't tan skin. My name is Laura Nance. I'm the owner of Sunseekers Tan Spa. I've been in the tanning business for nearly six years now. One of the best things to do to avoid sunburns is to come in and tan in a controlled environment to get a base tan. And they say, well, I'm going on a vacation um, to Mexico, South America, wherever, and so I need to go to the tanning bed to get a base tan so that I don't burn. Well, that is a very big misconception because you can't go to a tanning bed for a week or two before you go um, to a tropical place and expect your skin to not sunburn. It is still gonna sunburn. I tan, I only tan once a day now, um, I have tanned twice a day before and probably once it gets nicer out con consistently I will be tanning twice a day again. Oh I know I'm addicted. I'm a tanaholic and I'm a tanorexic so I feel like I'm, even though I am tan, I'll, be, I'll look in the mirror and I'll be like I'm not tan enough. Myself, I prefer to tan in the, one of our sun beds. Um, I like the benefits of the vitamin D that our body gets. I like the relaxation. Um, it does help with seasonal depression and it just warms your bones up. It helps avoid getting a sunburn because when you get a sunburn, that is when you tend to get more of the skin damage, which can also lead to um, skin cancer. The best way to avoid getting a sunburn um, is to use sunscreen with zinc oxide in it or and or titanium dioxide. I used to work at a tanning salon, and so I had to take a six hour course on how to be smart tan certified. And so I know the health risk, and I know what I'm supposed to be doing, so I feel like it's okay if I don't always do what I'm supposed to do. Okay, so there are two types of tanning. You can tan in a tanning bed indoors, or you can tan outdoors. The indoor tanning is is a little more dangerous because of the high concentration of UV radiation over such a short period of time, whereas tanning outside um, is probably a little bit slower process, but the results can be ultimately um, the same for either. And therefore you need to, you need to definitely use sunscreen on a regular basis and reapply. I think people that tan inside are so lazy. If I wake up early in the morning, I go outside and play a game of disc golf or play golf or something like that, the rest of the day I feel great. I'd imagine if I go sit in like a tanning bed for 15 minutes with 90 degree temperatures and bright UV lights across my face, I, I kind of feel like a robot just trying to get my energy. <laughs> my beliefs and the couple things I've learned and uh, heard is tanning on the inside or whatever under the fake UV lights is not nearly as healthy. I personally don't think it looks as good, obviously, because it's an orange, more orange color. It's not a dark bronze, like reddish. I don't think necessarily lazy. I think it's, you know, there's a couple different reasons why people do it. You know, a lot of time 
You know, a lot of people can't have a good setting to where there's a perfect day that works out with their plans, I think. I wouldn't say necessarily lazy, but easier. Yeah, I have never fake big friends or other people I know they have, which that's okay. I just, I'd never have. One of the reasons that people come in to do indoor tanning is that with their schedules these days, they don't have time to sit out for hours in the sun. It's, it's just much easier for them to pop in before work or after work to come in and get a little bit of color before they head out on vacation or they head out to the children's ball games and sit out there and just get fried in a sunburn. Everybody looks a little bit better. They feel better about themselves when they have a little bit of color. It makes you look healthier and makes them look thinner. The largest problem is that t indoor tanning beds um, are not necessarily uh, regulated and there is a much higher exposure to UVA radiation than UVB radiation, and it is the UVA radiation that is much more damaging to the skin than uh, the UVB. I always compare it to a steak. So you think about it like the steak is gonna have like fat on it, and then when you cook the steak and you make it a little browner, even though the fat doesn't really taste the best, it still looks really good. So that's how I feel when I'm pale. Like it's like, eh, the fat's okay. But then when you get darker, it's like, hey, that actually looks like it could be really good. I use it. Um, a lotion, a tanning lotion, or um, you can do spray tans. Th those are all very safe ways. I know um, because it, it still makes a lot of people feel that they feel better, they look better, their skin is better. It does camouflage a lot of flaws on your legs and that sort of thing. So for, for those of us who you know still like that color, a little bit of change of color, I say tan in a can. I've been in a tanning salon one time and what I felt like when I walked in there and they showed me the tanning bed was, oh, look at this cage I get to stand in for the next 20 minutes and fry my brains and my skin and my eyeballs. These are your one-time um, disposable eyewear. These are called Winkies. Um, like I said, again, it's Iowa state law. You have to provide eyewear. You have to wear your eyewear. Um, you want to wear your eyewear. It can, it can do a lot of damage to your eyes. It doesn't make it doesn't make any sense to me. Why would you want to go stand in an isolated area away from everybody else where you have to put they give you warnings to put skin protection on and eyeglasses on? There's a lotion that you can use in a tanning bed and it's called a tingle. What it does is it brings all the blood to the surface of your skin. And so you get out and you look like a lobster and you feel like you're on fire because it makes you extremely hot and it brings all the blood to your surface so you tan faster. That's probably the craziest thing besides going, I have had a membership to three tanning salons at once. It's very, very sad that I have so many young girls in their 20s, early 30s that tanned a lot in high school and I'm already removing atypical lesions off of them having to come back in, do wider excisions, put stitches in and leave scars. And they're always so upset because they have scars and I, I, I wish I could have said to them prior, you know, would you have tanned so much before if you knew what the result could be? And um, I think the answer for many of them would be no. We hope you enjoyed your tanning session and are looking forward to your next visit. Have a nice day.